So I'm Dan Lax. I have a Master's of Science in Environmental Health Science from UC Berkeley and an uh, undergraduate degree uh, in neuroscience and English literature from UC Berkeley. I have a lot of uh, research experience in different fields in endocrinology and child psychology, and neuroscience, and cancer biology. I decided to look at what would be the effects of chronic mercury exposure on the, on the human population. What this study found was that uh, chronic mercury exposure was rising over the years 1999 to 2006 within the U.S. population. And this rise went from 3% of the U.S. population to almost 30% of the U.S. population having detectable amounts of inorganic mercury in their blood. So it's a tenfold increase in the proportion of the human U.S. population that um, had detectable levels of inorganic mercury. Now, inorganic mercury is a specific form of mercury which is either made from organic mercury, which gets demethylated to this, or it's also made from elemental mercury, such as you get from dental amalgams, which gets catalyzed to it. And these deposits of inorganic mercury actually uh, get deposited in different tissues of the body and stay there for years. And so, whereas organic mercury leaves the body, has a half-life of around 60 days, um, these inorganic mercury deposits persist, they're very bioactive, and um, they, I think, are the best measure at the time of chronic mercury exposure, especially for a population-based study. So not only was there an increase in this chronic mercury exposure, but this chronic mercury exposure was at a level that was sufficient to elicit a biological response in the target organs of mercury toxicity. Mercury in many other toxicological studies has been shown to deposit and affect them, deliver the immune system and the pituitary. So I looked at those three uh, areas and I looked at biomarkers that indicated function for those three areas and all three areas were associated with this uh, chronic mercury exposure. So the immune system, uh, the biomarker I chose was white blood cell count and that was inversely related to chronic mercury exposure as, de as demonstrated by inorganic mercury detection. So if you have chronic mercury exposure you're going to have immune function problems and this has already been shown in vitro and in other toxicological studies. I didn't expect to find it in uh, the U.S. population, in the overall U.S. population. I expected this to be with, well within normal ranges without any biological effect. But uh, so in, in addition, the same was true with, with bilirubin and albumin, which both biomarkers of, of the liver function and associated with lots of diseases. And most strikingly, uh, and most novel finding of this study was the association with luteinizing hormone, which is secreted by the pituitary, which is also inversely related to chronic mercury exposure. So as chronic mercury exposure went up, luteinizing hormone level went down. Or as the probability of having chronic mercury exposure went up, the luteinizing hormone went down. So if you suffer from chronic mercury exposure, it seems like there's a bi biological response from the pituitary. I also looked at association with age, which has since also been um, ratified by a number of studies um, that uh, mercury exposure is uh, associated with age. As age goes up, you have more a higher percentage chance of having detectable amounts of inorganic mercury in this case. So a higher chance that you have chronic exposure. So it's not only depositing in the human population over time with increasing percentage of the population being affected, but as you age and as you get older, you're having an increasing chance of being afflicted by chronic exposure and whatever associated uh, morbidity uh, comes with that. But if you actually want to understand a disease or, or an exposure effect, you can't just focus on one one type of analysis, but if the epidemiology doesn't, isn't consistent with the toxicology, isn't consistent with the structural biology, isn't consistent with the biochemistry, then you don't have a, a valid or vital uh, hypothesis, and everything in, in the end is a hypothesis. I, I have taken steps in this research as in other research to follow the trail beyond just epidemiology. In this case, I followed it from the epidemiology to the structural biology. And what I found was 
that this luteinizing hormone has a very rare and very potent high affinity binding site. And not only that, but if you look at the three-dimensional structure, uh, it's actually found on this so-called seatbelt region, which is a very important uh, structural feature of the protein which binds the two subunits together. So effectively, uh, uh, mercury binding to this region of the uh, peptide of the amino of, of, of luteinizing hormone uh, in high probability will either affect its bioactivity or may affect its elimination rate, but it should have a biological effect. Now that is not known at this point. Um, but what is known is that uh, we went from this protein structural uh, information to try to validate um, what we found uh, in the epidemiological data and the hypothesis, which is that luteinizing hormone is a high affinity binding target for mercury. And now why this is important is because luteinizing hormone, and this is my second paper that I published, um, on the subject was that luteinizing hormone provides a causal mechanism for mercury-associated disease. Luteinizing hormone is in a place where mercury is deposited in the body at a much higher rate than other regions of the brain, at 200 to 300 percent higher. It's, uh, it has this luteinizing hormone, which could be, we thought at the time, hypothesized, may be a high affinity binding target. And luteinizing hormone, besides um, regulating um, androgens or um, sex steroids, you know, estrogen and testosterone, it also is involved in immune regulation, inflammation, and neurogenesis, the birth of neurons. So it basically the, it provides a mechanism for all of the associated symptoms and morbidity associated with mercury exposure and associated diseases. Why is it affecting uh, neurogenesis? Why is it affecting inflammation? Why um, is it affecting fertility? All these questions can be answered uh, through an interaction between mercury and luteinizing hormone. Um, I got contacted, someone had read the paper and got very enthused, Dr. Kellerman, and he said he wanted to work with me. He has since done uh, assays that have demonstrated convincingly that mercury does bind to luteinizing hormone with the same uh, or equivalent um, strength as it does to thyroidoxin, which is proven to be bioactively changed by mercury and to bind it almost irreversibly. So at this point, um, and this is rel relative recent news, we have shown that luteinizing hormone is a high affinity binding target for mercury. We haven't yet shown whether it's bioactive, but it's almost irrelevant whether it's bioactive because if it is bound to mercury um, almost irreversibly, um, then it can be a bioindicator of chronic mercury exposure. Um, it, can, it can show uh, possibly how much mercury is deposited in the pituitary, how much risk there is for uh, endocrine disease and associated diseases. So uh, that's one possibility. Now if we do show it is bioactive, that this mercury binding to luteinizing hormone does change the bioactivity, which is what I predict, then it explains this other mechanism where luteinizing hormone becomes a focal, uh, a focal um, link in the uh, causal mechanism that explains mercury exposure and accumulation, deposition, uh, and associated diseases and all these variety of different symptoms. Our chronic mercury exposures have reached a level that is having a significant biological effect. And not only that, but it is having a increased and elevated risk for our population and for individuals over time. But on the other hand, it seems obvious to, to researchers in the field that it's, it's a growing health risk that needs to be addressed. Not only that, it's a political issue that is being stymied. So without uh, a change in the political environment, science and the human health is really at risk.